Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hopefully, everyone is having a fantastic day. I want to personally thank you in for uh, a little bit different video as we explore some of the coins that I would buy if I had some extra money. And as you can see, we have it tiered. We're going to take a look at some coins that I would target at the $25 level. And then we're going to look at the $100 level coins, $500, bucks, and of course, $1,000. Now, we're going to keep it at this tier. Uh, level for a few months just to kind of try things out and this is going to be a little bit interactive as well you're going to have the ability to go in and uh, type in for yourself some of the coins that you would target if you had some extra money uh, as we all know it's tax season people are going to be receiving refunds or at least so in theory that's what's supposed to happen you know uh, so if you do have some extra money coming in and you want to treat yourself to something really nice maybe at one of these specific tiers it wouldn't be a bad idea to go look for a really nice piece for your collection now of course these are going to be coins that i would personally buy all right uh again not financial advice i'm not telling you guys to go out and actually buy these coins but these are coins for this mar uh this month now as you can see i used march 2022 we're coming up to the tail end of the month of February, so I figure, eh, let's just go ahead and start off fresh with March, and then I will do this video in lieu of uh, uh, the outgoing, what I used to do, uh, what was it, the, um, uh, the most expensive eBay coins uh, to sell every month. Um, I've done away with that particular video, and we're going to do this instead. Just to kind of keep it more approachable for everyone uh, to kind of help illustrate some of the things that I've been buying and things that I might be targeting myself uh, for specifically my collection. So uh, looking forward to talking about the group of coins I have here for you today. Uh, for each tier level, I have a few selections that I'm going to go ahead and just throw out there. And, um, you know, again, NFA baby, not financial advice. Don't go out picking up some of these coins thinking that uh, these are going to explode in value. These are just some coins that are kind of like my personal best bets to buy while there's still inventory out there. Now, I use the word inventory because inventory has been kind of slim these days with uh, just the, the buyouts of some of the older coins, especially the problem-free graded examples out there, the scarcities. We're beginning to see less inventory. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's the, the coins I'm going to pick out, obviously, are going to be smart choices for me. But you guys might have a different idea. Go ahead and post them below. Some of the coins that you would buy at these particular tier levels. And then in a week or two, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a video talking about some of your selections. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started with my personal picks for the $25 level. If I were looking to buy coins now, just a little caveat, a little bit of kind of like fine print I'm going to throw out there. Yeah, it's going to be easy to say, well, I'll just go to the bank and buy a $25 bank box of pennies. Okay, that seems to be the, the ultimate like homer lock, you know, when it comes to picking up coins. Um, you know, yeah, there's nothing wrong with buying bank boxes of coin to search through. Okay, uh, in addition, buying silver, we're going to stay away from like buying bulk junk silver or bullion type silver, you know, things like that. Stuff that normally you could pick up right close to melt value. Uh, so again, those are a few things that we're not going to focus on. But at the $25 level, I am most attracted to raw, brilliant, uncirculated buffalo nickels. Now, a quick checkup on the marketplace. Most specifically, I've been using eBay and Great Collections to kind of gauge where we're at on the value of some of these coins. Brilliant, uncirculated buffalo nickels, I would say from about 1929 to 38. Now 38 is the final year of the Buffalo Nickel series. You can pick up any just general BU condition coin for around 20 to 30 dollars. So it fits right in that 25 dollar average. The coin that you see here specifically is currently available on eBay for 24 I think 75 or some funky uh, number like that shipped. So this gives you an idea. Why not buy a really nice type coin? Uh, I've been looking at just 
you, you know, various BU Buffalo Nickels, um, because I also have an album that I'm filling as well. These are just generally a smart buy because they do retain their value. And then over the long haul, these are coins that I'm going to have a really easy time of moving when it's time to finally part with them. Uh, so BU, Buffalo Nickels, definitely a great choice here. Now, if maybe Buffalo Nickels isn't your thing, and maybe you really want some PMs, a little bit of precious metal type coins, how about BU Mercury Dimes? Um, this is actually an interesting one because I think the, the, the bandwidth of various dates really, really surprised me when I went and researched Mercury Dimes. Uh, now, again, we're focusing on strictly raw examples of Mercury Dimes and uh, choosing the right one uh, can be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, there are a few stoppers in this particular series that are not uh, obtainable at the $25 level, but Lo and behold, we have a few absolutely amazing examples here that are currently available on eBay for between $20 and $30. Much like the Buffalo Nickels, you're going to find some pretty satisfying examples, and you never know where you're going to find that one coin that you could cross over to a PCGS or NGC, especially if they're really well struck with full split bands. So we have a 42D here that looks fantastic. I mean, I can't believe that a coin like this is obtainable for between $20 and $30, but it sure is. One of the most popular design coins by Adolf Weinman. Of course, he's like one of the master engravers at the Mint during his day. Uh, I mean, this is a kind of a no-brainer pick for my personal selections. Now, I've been slowly scooping up a number of these coins at that twenty to thirty dollar level. All right, here's also a forty-five S. All right, with a little bit of toning, you could get a coin with some personality at this price level, believe it or not. And uh, you know, you're gonna buy this, you're gonna receive it in the mail, and guess what? You're gonna find just an absolute insane amount of satisfaction owning a coin like this for that price. I can't. Uh, think of a better coin to buy than one of these later date Mercury Dimes. Now, as far as date ranges, uh, I've identified just about any 1940s Mercury Dime. Uh, there might be a San Francisco one in there, like a, a 43S or a 42S that, that'll kind of like go beyond the uh, $25 average because those are tough to find uh, well struck and lustrous. Uh, but any 1940s PD and S dime can be had for this price level um, my next choice for this particular 25 dollar range is one that i've touted as being a set that that is a great investable type of set now this is one now i say not financial advice but i did a video on this particular set a number of months ago and um it, it's it's the 2017 San Francisco Enhanced Uncirculated uh, Mint Set. And uh, these include 10 coins. Um, the, the max mintage on the set was 225,000 sets made, which is quite scarce. And uh, these can be had for, believe it or not, around $20 ship. There's a number of listings on eBay currently for the set at the 1995 level shipped for a full 10 coin set. I mean, it hardly seems fair given the um, the one year type. It's a 225th anniversary of the Philadelphia Mint. Um, you know, you get this really cool kind of satiny uh, finish on these coins. And um, they, they are a fantastic pick. All right. And then uh, finally, to kind of uh, ride the parallel with this uh, 2017 S enhanced uh, set. How about a few of the graded examples in here in an SP70? You could choose between a PCGS or NGC graded coin. Oftentimes, these are going to be available for between $20 and $30. Uh, the nickel that you see there is going to be more toward the $20 end. Uh, you're going to pay a little bit more for the half dollar at about $28. Uh, the quarters seem to fit in that $25 to $30 range as well. There's five of them. Uh, Miles will get the whole set. I mean, it's it's kind of like a no-brainer. Um, very limited uh, production set. There's not a whole lot of them out there. If you looked on eBay right now, uh, there's really not a whole lot of listings for just the raw set. 
But when you look at graded coins, it's quite scarce. There's really not that many out in the marketplace. And I have a feeling that people have been slowly picking up various graded pieces uh, just to get them off the market at the cheaper price level um, in the hopes that they could compile a complete set. Uh, so another great option there for the $25 level, but let's get into the hundred dollar level. And I think at this range, the creativity of what you can buy, uh, expands a little bit, but at this level, you know, sometimes you want to kind of maybe delve into, uh, some silver coins. I think at a hundred dollars, a lot of the appeal with this price level has to be the fact that you could get into some pretty nice silver coinage. So what are we looking at here? First and foremost, how about a really nice minty fresh Walking Liberty half dollar? This is a no-brainer buy right here. I've bought probably a good half dozen of these since the holidays. Uh, when they do pop up, uh, I've been buying a number of them on eBay. I've picked up a few on great collections. And, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, actually a very achievable, uh, what they call short set, to pick up all the 1940s coins in mint state 63 or 64 for under a hundred dollars a piece so that's from 1940 to 1947 and uh again we're talking about one of the prettiest coins to ever to ever exist in numismatics uh the walking liberty half dollar series um it isn't a coin for just the rich folks you could easily jump into this series at a hundred dollars or less per coin uh, 44s right here is a great example of that as you can see the coin features just amazing luster it's got again that chef's kiss level of uh, artistic quality that even shows up on the silver eagles today so uh, another good one there uh, but also keep in mind you could dip into the 1930s of walking liberty half dollars for under a hundred dollars so long as you're at 1935 and it's Philadelphia, you can't really touch a Denver or San Francisco minted example during this short uh, uh, date range uh, from the 30s unless you're willing to go like $150 to $200. But for $100, bam, there you go. Mid-state 64, 1935 Walking Liberty, half dollar. Um, again, it seems unfair that these coins exist for that price level and under, um, every time I receive one of these in the mail, I, I, I'm blown away. I'm like, I feel like I've gotten my money's worth, uh, without getting into grades that are way too low. Uh, plus it'll afford you the opportunity to put together a really epic set. Uh, and again, these are going to be coins that are going to be easy to sell future, uh, later on down the road. All right. Okay, so this is what we all been waiting for, right? We got some big, huge, honky, 90% Morgan dollars. Okay, we got two NGC graded examples here. And uh, you're going to find that the date range is a little bit diversified. Okay, you can get some pretty interesting dates starting out with an 88.0. How cool is that? And you'll notice it's a mint state 63. The prices on these uh, somewhat average, very plentiful, graded Morgan dollars has been creeping up. For instance, this Mid-State 63 right here sold for around, I think, $97 or somewhere thereabouts. Uh, and it's a coin that one point in a, the most recent history of about maybe a year, year and a half ago, you could have picked this one up for under 80 bucks. Now, we're looking at a $100 price level for 63s and an 88.0. Uh, even a standard 88 is creeping up there as well. But we also have 19.040, and check out that grade. It's a 64. If you're going for quality, go for the one grade point higher. On a lot of these, uh, a lot of these issues, uh, sure, you're probably going to have to settle for a much more common date. But, I mean, it's hard to argue uh, with a coin that is easily 120 plus years old. You could do a whole heck of a lot worse with a $100 bill. Um, and, of course, PCGS getting some love, too. Check out this duo, 1884-0 and 1886. Again, all the coins I'm showing you are confirmed sales or their live sales uh, of maybe proxy auctions or Dutch auctions where they're selling multiples of that coin. Uh, but each of these coins right here, Mint State 64, 840, 86, yeah, they're pretty common, but these are coins that are going to continue to shoot upwards. 
uh, definitely something to keep an eye out on at that C note price level. So uh, again, uh, these are coins that I'm actively pursuing every month at the right price level. And sometimes you'll get a nice little bonus with some toning on there. Okay, that's also relevant in this matter. Toning equates to a little bit of originality and people do like that. Uh, so toners, I'm definitely going uh, after as well. All right, $500. Now, the whole world of coinage expands out a great deal. Like the, this, this cone just automatically goes way out and you could grab a lot of things for $500. Uh, so what are we looking at at the $500 level? Man, I'm going to throw you guys a little curveball. All right, so uh, I have had this affinity uh, for uh, various Spanish, Mexico, Guatemalan, Bolivian, um, eight realis. All right. So these are commonly referred to as, uh, where are they referred to? Pirate cobs, uh, uh, pillar dollars, uh, because they got the pillars on, uh, on some of them, uh, which are the uh, pillars of Hercules, if I'm not mistaken. But these coins, believe it or not, circulated in America up until about the 1850s. Uh, so there were a number of these found in, in uh, drainage ditches and old and rivers. Um, there's a video that Aqua Chigger had done a number of years ago uh, where he had found a whole like cache of these eight realis coins, uh, again, from all of these various countries from South America to Spain. Um, but at the same token, also found a bunch of Kappa's half dollars and Drapus half dollars and all that great stuff. Um, these are coins that if you're able to find them problem free, straight graded like this VF25 that you see here, these are hot hit coins. All right. At the $500 price level, I would not expect you guys to, to, uh, uh, say buy up a coin that's damaged. Okay. There's one exception, which we'll get to here. Uh, toward the end of this particular uh, uh, price level. Uh, but this is a great coin right here. Uh, these things are heavy. I actually have one right here. And it's actually, see this one right here, uh, this 1805M uh, is currently available for $450. This is one of the more bargain ones. This one's not going to last long. I might even think about getting this one. Uh, but this one right here is actually the coin that I have in hand right now. Uh, 1818 Mexico. This, uh, this was actually minted in Mexico City. Uh, it says JJ, and uh, the two eyes on the back actually have one of the serifs that's missing. Uh, so it looks like a letter J on there. Uh, Mexico, eight realis. Uh, this is a straight graded VF35 by NGC. Uh, I've picked up a number of these. Again, this is like the same weight and heftiness. Pretty close to what a Morgan dollar weighs. These things are incredibly heavy for what they are. Plus, they have the decorative edge on a lot of them, especially the Spanish ones. Uh, but when we're talking about coins that you could just just pursue and, and feel like that you've won the lottery, these are coins right here. They have so much history. Uh, again, we're going to be focusing on um, all these various countries of South America and Spain. Uh, they're going to have... Philip V on there, Ferdinand the th um, the third, I think, or fourth, and Carlos the third. Okay, these so these are some of the uh, uh, the figureheads that you're gonna find all the coins. But these are purely historical pieces, and again, there's something to be said with picking up a coin uh, that is problem free, and that's what I'm gonna be aiming for at this five hundred dollar price level. However, quick little curveball: the piece I bought here from Great Collections. Only set me back $206. Uh, so, you know, you can buy a few of these at that price level. But the ones you want to target are the more earlier, like late 1700s examples. Uh, those are very attractive. And if you could find them at the right price, I would, uh, I would certainly entertain adding a few more to my collection. Uh, now the one exception are going to be those shipwreck coins. All right. There's pirate treasure dreams out there of finding coins like this. Uh, and you can own one. All right. For about two to three to $400. Uh, these El Cazador, there's the, uh, uh, uh what's the other one? Uh, the Sao Jose, there's the Atosha shipwrecks. Uh, there's a lot of great shipwreck coins that you could buy. Again, these are all uh, shipwreck shipwreck effect 
effects coins or details coins uh, where the salt water has eaten away at them a little bit. Uh, but oftentimes you're going to find examples like this one where there's loads of detail left. You can see a full date, 1782 on there. Uh, again, these are a type of coins that generally sell for about two to four hundred dollars. Um, and they are fantastic. So that's that one there. All right. In the five hundred dollar slot, we got to add this coin in here. Uh, this is an 1884 Carson City. Carson City Morgan dollars, of course, are one of my favorites. Um, you know, this particular example right here is a, a really nice example. Uh, it's also graded. Now, of course, you're going to aim for the graded examples. They can either be graded in the original GSA holder, or you could find one in just a regular PCGS or NGC slab. Uh, but when you aim for a coin that's graded right around 64 to 65, on a few of these more common dates, that's going to be the ticket right there. And that's what I like most uh, about these particular coins is that uh, you can get really nice high quality pieces for under $500 uh, without feeling like you're depriving yourself any. Uh, you can even dip your toe into uh, much more difficult grades like 1878 Carson City Morgan uh, for right around $500. Uh, you might have to settle for like a mid-state 62, but that's okay. Uh, that's a much more difficult coin to find through all of this. And then here's another one. I mean, this one right here, again, throwing you guys another curveball. Uh, how about two of last year's big-time release? No, we're not talking about the Morgan or Peace Dollar series of coins, but the coins that I think got overshadowed because of those other releases. This is the two-coin, brand-new uh, 2021 Silver Eagle Designer Reverse Proof Set. Again, uh, these things came out uh, at about 180 bucks from the U.S. Mint, uh, and they shot straight up for you know a, a a super moment, and then they dip back down. Where can you pick them up at it these days? 230 dollars shipped for each set. Okay, there's a number of dealers on eBay that are selling these for around 230. I think I saw a few at 229 shipped. Uh, so you could buy two sets, and these are sleepers because they feature both the outgoing Reverse of 86 and the brand new Reverse of 2021 all in one set. But if you really wanted to go for the uh, kind of like the bonus round, why don't you just go ahead and pick up the set graded proof 70 in this uh, tandem NGC holder. This thing is sweet. Um, I wish I had the means to just pick one up right now. It'll take a few days, but... Um, yeah, this, this seller had sold, uh, quite a few of them, uh, and is left with about two or three left. Uh, more than likely they're not going to be there by the time I strike and get one, but yeah, a combo graded in the same slab of both coins, um, can be obtained for, uh, let's see, uh, you could get, uh, the, uh, the tandem set for around 479 shipped. Uh, again, uh, meeting the $500 price level. And we do have one more coin on the list and is a gorgeous one type beauty. 1853 seated Liberty half dollar with rays on the reverse. Uh, but you're looking at a very specific grade if you're trying to keep it within $500 and it's going to be AU 53. Uh, so you could either pick up an NGC or PCGS coin. Uh, to keep it in line of that $500 level. But this right here, ladies and gentlemen, with the raise, just gives us one a whole new level of appreciation for U.S. type collectors. These are drying up in the marketplace. And oftentimes, you're going to see maybe one or two of these pop up in the market uh, every so often. Like, you know, like once every two weeks, uh, you'll see one on like great collections or eBay. Um, but there are going to be people trying to sell these at this grade level for beyond $500. Um, stick to your guns because some of them have been selling for between $460 and $500. Uh, I think one even sold for like $455, somewhere around there. Um, so again, I'm looking for one of these for my type set. And this is like kind of like that, that grade level that I want out of this. Um, just a really superb looking coin again for 500 bucks. This is like a no brainer here. Um, uh, a uh, coin that in this grade level is going to be appreciated for years to come. All right. We've gotten to that point a thousand bucks, baby. Uh, this is the level of the video where you have, you're afforded quite the selection of coins. 
Of course, if we're going to be doing this every month, I can't just simply lay it out on the line. I could only pick a few coins so that way I have something to talk about in April. Uh, but what do we have here at 1000 bucks? How about this one, right? This coin, again, overshadowed by the 1909 SVDB Lincoln. This one is the 1909 S Indian Head Cent. There is a mint mark. I know my head's like in the way right here. It's actually underneath, right here, uh, underneath the wreath. Um, but yeah, this is a coin right here with a limited mintage. What is it? 309,000 pieces produced. Final year of the Indian Head Cent with a mint mark on it. Uh, this one, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, is one that I've been looking for for quite a while. Every time one pops up, it sells out immediately because they are priced right. Uh, at a thousand bucks, you could pick one of these up for right around nine hundred dollars, and have enough money left over to buy yourself a really good steak dinner at the end of the day. Uh, this particular example, AU fifty three brown with some really nice wood graining on there. It's just the look I'm looking for, and unfortunately, this one had escaped me by the time I uh, caught wind of it. Uh, but this right here, man, uh, for, for that price level, uh, this is a very nice kind of like marquee coin for a collection, if you wanted it to be. Um, coming up next, how about something extraordinary? Uh, you know, we got some Seated Liberty dollars here. We got a couple of them, but there's a wide range of dates that you could uh, pursue. Uh, 1859. Uh, 1842, uh, how about this one here? Uh, 1846, Seated Liberty Dollar. This is a dollar, by the way, not a half dollar. Uh, of course, we're looking for straight graded coins. This one just so happens to be an XF45. Uh, it's even CAC stickered. Uh, this one right here is available for $9.49 or something like that. And uh, just a beautiful coin. I'm looking to add another one of these to my collection for my type set. And, uh, you know, some of the more scarcer, scarcer dates are just way out of touch. Uh, but, you know, uh, here's another one here. This time it's an Omen. This is a New Orleans 1846 Seated Liberty dollar. Uh, again, uh, this one is graded a touch lower at a VF35. But it's a beautiful coin. Very honest. Just regular circulation, you know, kind of appearance to it. Uh, this one's about the same price as the previous coin as well, even though it's a couple grade points lower. Uh, but for a thousand bucks, this is what I'm looking at right here is uh, one of these bad boys. And then finally, we can't do one of these without throwing in a little bit of early pre-1933 gold. All right, so what can a thousand dollars get you? Are we aiming for rarity or are we aiming for the highest possible denomination? I can tell you this right now. We can't touch a double eagle quite yet. It might be nowhere near the future where we could use a thousand dollars to buy a double eagle St. God's. Okay, but hey, how about a ten dollar? Just a regular good old eagle. Uh, this is an eighteen ninety one. Uh, believe it or not, these are obtainable for right at a thousand dollars, and then sometimes you'll have to stretch a little bit uh, to about thousand fifty, maybe eleven hundred dollars. But you know, if you get a really good tax return. And you have nothing to do with the money, you know, all your bills are paid and whatnot. Um, get some early gold. I, I mean, you know, as opposed to getting massive quantities of something, all right, getting a gold U.S. type coin um, uh, should be on every every coin collector's list. Uh, why not aim at the, you know, the, the ultimate kind of like grand prize out of all of this? Uh, but this is just a beautiful coin. Uh, this one's currently at an auction. It's, I think, at $1,032. It's a mid-state 62 uh, through PCGS. Just a stunning example. Uh, that yellow metal man just gets me sometimes. But that is a beauty. That's going to go ahead and do it. Again, I would love to hear your thoughts. What are your picks for 25, 100, 500, and 1,000? I would love to hear it. I'm going to do a video where I highlight some of your picks in about a week or two. We'll love to hear what you have to say. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. That's going to go ahead and do it for today. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell for some notifications. Coinaholics, that's going to do it for this one. You guys take care, and I'll see you on the next coin video. So long.